Compared to our sun, a pulsar is several orders of magnitude smaller in size, yet has an even greater mass. A millisecond pulsar is an ancient neutron star with radio frequency beams emitted along its magnetic axis at some constant offset angle, rotating hundreds of times per second. We can detect pulsars as these emissions, traveling across many light years, are intercepted by a radio telescope. Because a pulsar's frequency is rock steady, pulse arrival times can be predicted with extremely high accuracy. If the pulsar was to move away from us for some reason, this would be reflected in pulses arriving with an extra delay. If the pulsar was in a binary system with an object such as a planet, this delay would vary periodically. However, this situation is indistinguishable from that where some periodic motion is occurring on the receiving end but has not been accounted for. Such was the case with the British discovery announced in 1991 and retracted in early 1992 after the omission was corrected. Concurrent with the British retraction, Alex Volschen from Cornell's Arecibo Observatory and his colleague announced the discovery of a pulsar with a more complex variation in pulse arrival times. Independent periodicities were extracted based on an orbital dynamics model. Applying Kepler's law to the amplitude, period, phase, and assumed pulsar mass, the orbital radius and mass of an individual planet is derived. Here, the first planet is shown with corresponding pulsar reflex motion. Similarly, the second planet is derived. Summing the reflex components from each planet results in a more complex pulsar motion. The third and outermost planet completes the system. Projecting the pulsar's path onto the line of sight and moving through time, we reconstruct the reflex motion of the pulsar. This explains the delay signal received. The resulting system is shown here compared to our own inner solar system with planet size scaled up for visibility. But how can we be certain that the signal in this case indicates the presence of planets and not just an unaccounted for periodicity caused by other phenomena? The proposed method of confirming the existence of these planets involves the fact that the inner two planets pass close enough during their conjunctions to noticeably interact gravitationally. As a result of the gravitational force between them, the inner planet gains phase and orbital radius while the outer planet diminishes in the same. The effect of these variations on pulse timing is cumulative and increases after each conjunction occurring about every 200 days. The next one will occur in late August 1992. The shape and magnitude of time delay variations caused by planetary perturbations can be predicted exactly and compared with observations. If these predictions match the measured pulse arrival times, this will constitute a confirmation that this pulsar does, in fact, have orbiting planets.